A really big issue many corporations are thinking about at the moment is how green is your IT? After all, IT was supposed to save the world by reducing travel, reducing amount the paper that people use and so on. The reality has often been less clear. Now, for example, there are now 500 million obsolete computers in America alone, with 130 million mobile phones thrown away every 12 months. Over 70 million computers are already in landfill and e-waste is already 2% of all solid municipal waste in America and contains many hazards which end up polluting water supplies and so on. Uh, computer screens are full of lead, they are responsible for 40% 40 40 of all the lead in landfill. You know, Apple has uh, taken a number of steps to green its IT. It's already banned a long list of toxic substances from its products and manufacturing, including asbestos, cadmium, mercury and lead. Intel has already uh, worked to replace a lot of very volatile solvents used in the production of printed circuit boards and is still struggling, but will hopefully uh, find a solution soon to the use of isopropyl alcohol, which is still needed to clean uh, many of the silicon wafers after manufacturing. Now, Hewlett-Packard has taken a big lead. It reckons that greening IT means recycling. And uh, in uh, 2007, they recycled double the amount that they'd done in 2006, around uh, um, 250 million pounds of product was turned around and put out again. Of course, print cartridges being a very good example. Their target is to raise two billion pounds of products by the end of 2010. Now, the web itself needs a lot of greening. Why is that? Just powering the internet is absorbing 5.3% of all global electricity production. And that is an extraordinary fact considering that the internet itself is growing dramatically in terms of the bandwidth that it requires. One trillion kilowatt hours of electricity was used in 2007 to power the web. That's uh, around 9.4% of all electricity consumption in the US was used to power the web. You know, these are huge amounts of, 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 of energy and we can expect web traffic to grow by up to 40 to 100 times over the next 10 to 12 years with the growth in video streaming. The web itself, of course, has many components in it which are using energy. It's not just the PCs that are plugged in online, it's web servers. Web servers in the US use the equivalent of a full year's output from seven 1,000 megawatt power stations last year. In fact, that's more power used by web servers in America than used by the entire state of Mississippi. Now, we could deal with a lot of this with more efficient power supplies. For example, Google's power supplies for web servers are over 90% efficient. Many other organizations use ones which are only 30% efficient. Other ways to reduce uh, uh, a web server energy losses include things like power management software using Windows Server 2008, which uh, boasts a 10% energy savings over uh, earlier software. Linux claims even better. We can have more efficient cooling systems, better use of fiber optics, uh, turning additional servers on and off depending on the load. Uh, you know, 200,000 servers and a great big bank can be turned on or off in five minutes flat. We can also adjust the cooling systems to the number of servers actually requiring cooling. We can use heat exchangers to cool server farms and to transfer the heat into nearby homes and so on. But one of the most exciting areas when it comes to server technology is not just web-based servers, it's servers used inside companies. And it's virtual servers using many applications on the same PCs. Uh, in the past, we were restricted with the same software platform, uh, the same operating uh, system on, the, on one server alone, and you couldn't share applications. But future software will allow us to do, that, to do that quite routinely, and the savings can be huge. It can be almost $300 a year per server and 300 kilowatt hours of power each year uh, per server. And uh, you will see many organizations rolling out virtual service and storage, virtual storage, uh, where, where servers are being shared uh, across uh, a number of different business units or even where one organization is providing a whole bank of servers which are shared jointly by a number of different companies. I know there are security issues there, we have to be careful. Now another key area where IT needs greening is in people's homes. Let's take plasma screens as an example, which are a total power nightmare. In the UK, the total domestic energy bill was 18 terawatt hours in 2008. But that is expected to jump to 
31 terawatt hours in just three years, mainly as energy hungry devices multiply in our homes and as I say, plasma screens are a number one culprit. They are the main reason why energy use is spiraling out of control, because the technology that's used there is much less energy efficient, strangely enough, than old cathode ray tubes. It's four times as much energy is needed for a large plasma screen than, uh, than, a, a, than a 1990s TV set. And the reason why that's a challenge is because in the UK alone, one new plasma screen was sold every 15 seconds throughout 2008. Indeed, if all UK screens were on at the same time, all UK plasma screens were on at the same time, it would require the UK generating system to provide an additional 2.5 gigawatts of power. Okay, so that's the downside. What's the upside? Well, you know what? As I've, as I've shown with things like web servers, this technology can easily be green. Whether it's uh, uh, using much less power hungry chips, memory chips, processor chips, whether it's uh, using better power supplies, whether it's being much more systematic about uh, uh, powering down equipment, whether it's uh, reducing the amount of energy used in standby processes, whether it's in particular turning off plasma screens when they're not being watched for more than a minute or two, and whether it's producing next generation plasma screens which have only a fraction of the energy consumption. There are hundreds of ways in which green can be, uh, IT can be greened and our world can be made more energy efficient. And in the meantime, we also need to look at ways to make sure that we actually do save energy uh, by traveling less, with more home working for example, less commuting, uh, less business meetings, face to face, more distance business meetings using all kinds of tools of modern technology. And that means next generation video conferencing with true eye to eye contact rather than the systems which many companies have got fed up with. Most people do not like using video conferencing. One of the reasons is they land up looking at the bald head of the person they're speaking to because of course the person is looking at the screen rather than at the camera at the top of the screen. A way around that of course is to look directly into the camera because when you look directly in people see the passion of your eyes and the they feel a certain sense of connection with you emotionally. Whereas if you look to one side or the other, or even worse, up and down and sideways, you lose connection with your audience straight away. Of course, latency is also a challenge, especially if you're bouncing an image 36,000 kilometers into space and then bouncing it down another 36,000 kilometers to another land station, right across the Atlantic, for example, you have serious delay because there is a limit to the speed of light. And if you can find more direct methods of getting that data from A to B, uh, maybe through a fiber optic cable, you will reduce the latency. Or uh, if you find that there's less switches involved, and less service uh, through which the data has to go, and so on, and less compression, so that you're not having to use as much software to generate the signal from my camera now, or to interpret it at the other end. All of these things reduce latency, they increase the uh, apparent uh, spontaneity of the transmission. And of course, let's get the video conferencing equipment out of the boardroom and into people's homes or wherever it needs to be because many video conferences are happening when one side of the world is almost asleep and the other is only just awake. So there isn't much point in having the best video conferencing systems in the world in, uh, in fixed office locations. And finally, use of paper. IT was supposed to be green and yet, unfortunately, in the age of email, the amount of printing of paper has gone up in most offices. That, of course, is partly a function of bandwidth, that you and I can read big pieces of paper much faster than we can read what's on a small screen. That bandwidth will improve online as we uh, find bigger screens with better resolution. But for a long time to come, it will still, unfortunately, be more time efficient to read a complex printed document and mark it up and so on than it will be to try and work your way through it on the screen. But we can still save an awful lot of stuff from being printed out. So, how green is your IT? The writing's on the wall. We need to take steps, reduce our amount of energy, use this technology more smartly and improve our world.